Hey YouTube, this is Itchy, and I wanted to update our forecast for fallout potential. Uh, put out a video on Friday talking about possible fires and or criticality going on at Fukushima. My concern was that the jet stream that would be coming over and, and passing through Alaska, um, British Columbia, Alberta, and then down into uh, Montana, Idaho, Salt Lake City, uh, in this area. We had another storm system that came through though and is actually dividing the jet stream and you can kind of see the, the outline of it right here. Um, this system had some very strong winds associated with it that actually caused quite a bit of damage in California. So now what we have is jet stream overlying this area with quite a bit of rainfall and the one that we were the most concerned with, you can see the edge of it here. Here it is pushing down into um, the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Looks like uh, the northern half of Utah. I went over to the EPA graphs to see what's been going on the last few days. And here's um, Spokane, going just under 200. Denver, just under 300. Doesn't look like that jet stream made it uh, down quite that far since that other system came in and split it in half. Mason City, Iowa is reading a bit high, uh, just under 300. Idaho Falls, of course we had a big spike here the other day of 750. This would have been pushed out ahead of that uh, jet stream. And today the levels are lower, they're uh, around 250. And then it looks like we even had a little bit of a drop today, which is good compared to what Idaho Falls usually looks like. Phoenix also had some very high readings, 850 on December the 1st. And again, this would have been ahead of that particular jet stream that we were concerned with. And it didn't look like it made it that far. Um, and the levels are lower here today. So this is what we have. Let me back this up. This is Friday. And if you remember from the last video, it looked like this was going to go down. What they were forecasting is it would dip through Texas and then back on up. But instead, because this, uh, this strong system came in through California, what, it's, what it did is actually split the jet stream. And here we've got um, another one moving that's going to be moving through the same area. This will be Wednesday. I'd be really concerned also um, because Noah's predicting a lot of rainfall for this area. This edge might have had um, some of the fallout that was coming from the north pushed into it. And I've been noticing um, from independent sources doing readings um, with their Geigers that the edges of this jet stream seem to be where it's the highest. Now the, the wind travels faster in the center, so I, we'll have to watch that and see if that's a consistent finding because that will certainly help pinpoint these forecasts a little better. This is what NOAA is predicting right now for the next five days, and remember that outline is going to be right here so every state that is involved should be exercising extreme caution and in this area of the country and this is what we have going on right now I'd be especially concerned about the snow in these areas too um, because what we've learned recently is that the potential for fallout is much greater in snow than it is in rain because in, in rain um, the radioactive particles 
that are blowing around uh, up in the troposphere, which is the most active part of our atmosphere. It's where all the storms are ger generated from. Um, those particles attract water vapor, and when they attract enough water vapors, when they fall to the ground. However, in snow, because of the um, the shape of the snowflakes, their uh, ragged and sharp edges, when they flow through the air, they pick up uh, a more of an electrical charge, which then attracts radioactive particles to them like a magnet. So the potential is going to be higher in areas with snowfall than it is in areas for rainfall. Now I'm going to post a link to any news and um, there's been a couple readings on here today, borderline high, not too bad. Most of the people tend to post their data in the evening, so I will keep an eye on that. And I also want to enclose a link if you want to look over some of the research that was done in the 60s by the Civil Defense Department. Uh, there's three websites where you can locate um, this information. One is the Civil Defense Museum and um, another one would be the FEMA website. They actually have all of the uh, documents archived in PDF form where you can read what recommendations would be to farmers to protect their livestock and also in uh, predictability for where the, the highest potential fallout would be. This isn't a new science. This is something that had been studied um, very extensively back in the 60s. So luckily we still have access to all those documents. Um, I'll enclose those links and I'll find the third one. I don't recall what it was. So you can do some of your own research. And uh, let's see what's going on on the JNN live camera right now. I noticed some comments on any news that there were um, quite a few little flashes and colored lights going on last night on the site, but the large uh, yellow area now seems to be green and occasionally there's some red that's showing up. I'll blow this up. The picture's a lot clearer too than it was before. So this is the area in question. This is reactor three. This is the reactor that the robots had gone into last week where the, uh, the level shot up three times of what they were previously. So right now workers cannot be around this reactor, um, which leads me to believe that uh, this is not from work that's being done. I don't believe that this is an indication of a hydrogen burnoff either because hydrogen would burn orange. Um, we'll keep an eye on it and see what changes. If you guys notice anything, uh, please send me an email or um, any of your observations or theories, please include them below in the comments. Thank you and have a great weekend.